What's going on everybody? Welcome to part two of our Discord Pi bot tutorial. In this tutorial, we're just going to start building out an actual bot. The only thing that's changed from the last tutorial is I've just started saving the token in a, a file so I don't have to show you guys my token and I don't forget about it and all that. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we probably want to do uh, immediately out of the gate is right now when we break our client, uh, the bot doesn't exactly log out uh, for quite a while. Sometimes it like I've seen it sit there for like an hour. <laughs> so, so we definitely want to be able to like have the bot leave at some point. So, for example, we could do that as simple as uh, get out of here. Two exclamation marks in message content dot lower, um, or you could do double equals even to make it like a command. Um, then what we want to do is rather than message.send, we could await a client.close. So anytime it's a coroutine, so if you go look at the docs and it says it's a coroutine, you have to await the coroutine. If you don't await it, uh, basically the it you know it'll throw that command out, but then you'll carry on and, and forget all about it. So you would it, it just wouldn't be a very good idea. So we'll await client.close and then um, that's that. So the first thing that we'll do now is let's just go ahead and save and run that real quick. Um, so I ran it, there's my bot. Um, and then what we can say is, uh, what did I say? Get out of here, double, uh, so get out of here. And there he goes, he's gone. So easy enough. Um, so that's one thing we want to go ahead and add to our bot. Now, what I'd like to do is, so you could say, uh, you know, log out, or, you know, make it some sort of command for your actual bot. Um, since I'm calling mine Centibot, and this is some sort of, uh, you know, it's, it's a Python channel, it's a bot that's going to reside on a Python channel, I'm just kind of making everything like it's a method. So I'm going to say if centibot.logout um, in message content lower. I'm actually not even sure. I guess we well we've done the client dot close, but we haven't broke <laughs> await client dot close, and then we could do like an exit or something. But for now, I'm just going to cancel that. Um, okay, so uh, the next thing I want to do is um, let me come up to my channel, and uh, so let's go ahead and start adding. Um, like, so sentabot.logout, what if we want to get, like, for example, I want to start tracking, uh, like, users uh, on, the actual, um, on the actual server. So one of the ways that we can do that is with, like, by counting members, and then we can also do things like seeing who's online, who's idle, who's offline, who's got, like, do not disturb, all that kind of stuff. So we can start pulling in that kind of information uh, when we reference the actual guild. Now, to get your guild, uh, you just need your ID. So right click any server, copy that ID, and that's the, the actual um, ID for your guild, which is, it used to be called a server. So if you're looking up like uh, stuff that you can do with that and you see an example and it uses like client.server, uh, just know that that's, uh, or you know, client.get server, it's now it's get guild. I, I'm not sure why they made that change. I mean, I know Discord is for gaming, but Discord calls it server, and I'm not sure if Discord plans to call it guild, <laughs> but, but whatever. Okay, so um, so that's what we're gonna do. So first of all, we're gonna say, at least for me, you could say guild equals, um, and it would be easier for other people to read your code, but I'm gonna call it syntax guild, and you can call it whatever you know your guild is called, and I'm gonna do client.get guild, and you get the guild by the ID, and I just right-clicked my server and got the ID. You also can do like, uh, I forget what the, the command is, uh, there is, there's like a way that you can get all the guilds. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, you could cycle through all the guilds that your bot has access to and then figure it out by name or something like that, or you can just right click it this way. So once we have the guild, the next thing that we could do is we can make a command that gives us information about that guild. So the next question that we could say is, um, and in fact, I think I'm gonna, uh, we'll just start calling these L if statements. So we'll start with if, um, so if, uh, sent a bot dot member count and then in this case we're gonna say double equals and then we probably should say that here as well um, so rather than in message dot content dot lower we're gonna say it has to be exactly that because otherwise it would be a syntax error right <laughs> uh, such a nerd okay so uh, syntax dot member count um, 
if that is your message dot content dot lower and in theory we we could stop using lower because it should be this exact command um, okay so if it is that let's go ahead and await message dot channel dot send and then uh, what we're gonna send is another f string and um, and in fact we could send it in these like the code blocks I think that's right three of them yeah so you could say um, and then make sense it's an f string we could say uh, syntax underscore guild dot uh, member underscore count now um, initially my thought was to act to keep this as an attribute as it is an attribute here um, but then as I started thinking about everything, pretty much everything else is going to end up being like a method. Um, and that was going to be really confusing. So I'm going to make it a method if that bothers somebody, uh, which it shouldn't. But if it does, um, you know what to do. So <laughs> you can change it yourself. So actually, I'm going to say it's a Python code block, new line, and then we'll print out the member account. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's run that. Hopefully we're um, all good. Okay, we've logged in. Um, one of the bots is talking. And uh, let me come down here. So now, if I call sentabot.member account, so sentabot.member. Oh my gosh, if I get top. Dude. <laughs> uh, he responds okay, we've got 8,188. Uh, members in the server. And then let's go ahead and do a sentibot.logout. Sentibot.logout. Good day! <laughs> Didn't like you anyways. Okay. Um, so I'm wondering if, if maybe what we could do is... I don't really know. Let's see. Import sys and then sys.exit. I'm not sure if that's enough to cleanly exit. Let's just try that really quick. Um, okay, cool. That way we're not hitting that silly error anymore. So we'll just await client.close um, and then we go ahead and exit. Okay, so I that's pretty much all I really want to cover in this one. I do have one more uh, thing that's in the text-based version of the tutorial, and maybe what I'll do is I'll just copy and paste it. There's really nothing fancy here that's like new or a new concept, so I'm just, I think that's just what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just uh, copy that. Ah, it did get me. <laughs> uh, I got to figure out how to like close all this, the threads when you're like running uh, asynchronously. Not really sure. Anyways, uh, not my problem right this instant. Tools, uh, cancel build. If you know the answer to that, uh, let me know. Otherwise, I'll probably Google it after I'm done with this tutorial and figure it out anyway. Um, so uh, the other thing that we could do is uh, elif sent a bot. So in this case, elif sent a bot dot community report. If that's the, you know, the thing that we ask, what we can do is we can iterate through all of the guild members and then each member has a, a status uh, attribute um, and that'll be online, offline, it might be idle, it might be DND for do not disturb and other things. So um, I'm just going to call anybody who's idle or some other status other than online or offline, we're just going to say that's idle. So then what we can do is, um, and again, I might want to call this but I'll just leave it this way for now. We can worry about you can worry about formatting that stuff later. Um, there are various like markdowns that you can use and stuff, but uh, we'll just stick with this. So uh, let's go ahead and run that, and then I'm just going to copy this, and then I'll bring this over here, paste. Okay, so this gives us the actual realistic numbers. So in this case, there's 20, uh, 267 people that are actually online, 523 are idle, busy, or do not disturb, and then offline, 7,665. Which is interesting, because that doesn't quite agree with this number here that says 505 people are online. I don't know if that has to do with like if they're invisible or something like that, which it very well may. Um, 
I don't know. Someone, someone again, if I'm missing something, comment below and let me know what I've what I've done wrong. But I'm pretty sure that online works and then offline works and then maybe I'm just throwing too much into idle or something like that. I don't really know. Okay, so I think that's enough uh, for this one. And uh, maybe I'll have one more video as I continue to build this out. The problem is it's basically just a bunch of this. I mean, you're, you're building out, uh, you know, commands and then those commands do things. And then to figure out what you can do with commands, you just check out, uh, let me pull it over, uh, the API reference. Let's see. Here we go. Um, so if you want to learn more about all the things that you can do, just check out the documentation. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do here. Um, I might reserve the next tutorial. What I'd really like to do is, um, like in this community report, um, I would like to be able to start uh, keeping track, like maybe run that every, I don't know, every 30 minutes or 10 minutes or something, save the results to, um, save the results to maybe like SQLite or even just like a CSV file. And then later you could uh, create graphs. And then instead when you do the community report, it would be a report of graphs instead. And then the, uh, the bot can attach files if you give it the permission. So it could attach a file of the graphs when you actually call a community report. And you can see graphs over time. Um, so I might do something like that for the next video because like I said, at some point, it's just a bunch of these simple commands. There's really nothing too fancy about it. Um, I did do a search. Maybe I'll do that if you guys want to see how I like implemented the search. But basically, that was just a, um, a scrape of Python programming.net, some regular expressions, and boom, the search works. Um, so yeah, let me know if you want to see the search. Otherwise, I'll probably reserve the next uh, part three to be probably an upgraded community report where over time we kind of save some of this stuff. Um, also, if you see this, it's just because you're, you're in um, you know, like Sublime or something. If you run this in a console, it'll just show like the little squares and you won't really, you won't get an issue like that. Oops. So anyways, uh, that is all for now. Quick shout out to my most recent amazing members, Michael Zhao Jiang. Joseph Coleman, Siva Gabi, and Amper Hammer. Thank you guys very, very much for your support. If you didn't know how to support and become a member, you just click that beautiful button right there. It's got those nice stars around it and stuff. Join. Boom. Done. So, anyways, helps me keep doing what I do. I can put up more content quicker. Uh, the more I can focus on this rather than doing things like contracting and consulting. So um, definitely check it out if you want to support the, uh, the channel and the content. Also, you get early access to videos just like this one. So that's all for now. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below or you can join our Discord, discord.gg slash Otherwise, I will see you guys in another video.